We're broadcasting from the UN Climate Summit in Paris, France. Today, we start today's show with the global refugee crisis, the greatest exodus of people since World War II. On Monday, the United Nations appealed for $20 billion in additional aid, saying that at present funding levels, the U.N. is, quote, not able to provide even the very minimum and core protection and life-saving assistance. U.N. officials cited the wars in Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq, Yemen and South Sudan as one of the major reasons there are nearly 60 million people forcibly displaced worldwide. The largest single displaced community are Syrians, with four million refugees forced outside Syria's borders by the ongoing conflict. Last week, after a contentious 10-hour debate, the British Parliament voted to authorize airstrikes against Syria. The bombing began within hours. Well, only a few days later, Democracy Now! traveled, oh, an hour and a half north of Paris to the Calais refugee camp. It's the largest refugee camp in France. Six to 7,000 people are living there, camped out in makeshift tents. Their goal is to reach Britain. And each night, people set out along the highway to the Channel Tunnel, where they attempt to cross into Britain by jumping on top of or inside trucks or lorries. A few days earlier, a Sudanese man named Joseph was killed when he was run over by a car on the highway. On Saturday, while we were at the Calais refugee camp, residents protested that the police had not stopped the driver. People held signs reading, we are humans, not dogs. And what do the survivors of war have to do to live in peace? Right next to the refugee camp is this overpass, and we've heard that a young Sudanese man was killed, hit by a car, and the car didn't stop, and the people are angry because the police didn't arrest the driver. They're holding up signs in Arabic and English that say, our destiny here is unknown. Today, Joseph. Tomorrow, who? Where is the UN in this? Europe, do you hear our call from Calais? Our destiny here is unknown. Okay. Can you tell me your name and um, what you're doing here? My name is Majd. I'm from Syria. I'm here like everyone. To, I'm a refugee escaped from the war. Yes, from two days ago, it was there is a refugee on the hallway, and uh, some people here uh, in the hallway uh, killed him. This is a Did murder. Did they um, run him over? Yes, they ran him over in the hallway. Huh. Yes, it, it is not the first time, but it's the first time he is. It's the first one he did. Is dead. <coughs> yeah, we have another ones in the hospitals, uh. and there is a lot of violence here. The treatment of the police, the treatment of the truck drivers, it's not good at all. Yes. And so, what does your sign say? Yeah, she said uh, to, uh, today is uh, Joseph, tomorrow who? Maybe yes. me, maybe someone of, uh, from uh, my country, from my friends, from my, my family here. Where was Joseph from? Joseph is from Sudan. Uh, and where are you from? Syria. And when did you come here? Two months ago. Uh, and yes. why are you here? I'm here to go to the UK. Yes, to be. To? The UK. United, uh, to the United Kingdom. Yes. Yes. And where did you live in uh, Syria? In Damascus. And why did you leave? It's, uh, I'm skipped from the war. I don't want to be to die in this war. It's not my war. Yes, everyone is uh, having. It's uh, everyone is fighting in my country. Yes, uh, so I skipped from the war. I don't want to be dead for nothing. How old are you? Twenty-one. Are you a student? No, no. I uh, I was working, yes. And what was happening in Damascus? In Damascus, and now it's just the Assad regime there. They taking all the young people, the young boys, to the war. They must go to the army. Yes, there is no uh, no one there is civilian. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you said everyone is attacking your country. Who? Yes. Who? Everyone. Russia. Russia and America and Iran, everyone, yes. And so what do you want to do? I just want to live in peace and be like any human again. 
Yes, to have a family, to be safe. Yes, that's, that's it. Is your family back in Syria? Yes. Yes, I have just uh, three, uh, two uh, sisters and one uh, brother, small brother. They stayed? Yes, and my fa father and mother there. And what did your parents think about you leaving? They just want me to be safe. Yeah, they send me out. Yes. Do you think the Russian, Syrian, French, British bombing of Syria will save it? No, 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 it's not the solution. You can't protect someone by killing someone else, you know? They can't stop the bombs here when they bomb in Syria. Yes, this is not the solution. What is the solution? The solution is not giving the weapons to everyone. They're giving the weapons to the free army, to the Assad regime, to ISIS. They just give weapon, weapons and money and just, they, leave the, they uh, let them fight in my country. Just stop the weapons. Now, the Britain just voted, the UK just voted to bomb Syria as yeah. well. Uh, you want to try to but get into Britain? The Britain or the USA? The governments or the people? Who, who, who vote? Who voted? I'm asking. The, the governments? Who, I mean, it's, it's, it's not the people. I, I'll go to the UK to live with the civilians. I'm not going to the government. Yes. Majid has just taken us to the house that him and his friends have built out of, you made it out of um, wood? Woods, yes. And Wood. plastic? Plastic and some blankets. How many of you sleep in here? Three. Three of you. Yes, two on the floor and one in the bed, if you can call and it a bed. Talk about what happened when you were in Syria, where you lived. Um, uh, with your family, what you did, what your parents do? We was have a building, whole building. My family was uh, in the upstairs, upstairs, and we have a fabric, and a factory, yes, a paint factory. Uh -huh, a paint factory. Paint yes. factory, yes. It was bombed from uh, five years ago. Yeah, we was living a good life, cars and houses and the parties, and everything. Yeah, we lost everything. Right I'm surprised you can still smile. Yeah, I have to. <laughs> if I don't smile, it will be the end of my life. I see on your phone you have a picture of your family. Can you show yes. me? This mm -hmm. is my family, my small brother and my father and my sister, daughter. I don't know how to call it. How many months or years do people stay here? Most of them about... It's uh, there's no uh, specific time or something. Some people one week, some people one year. Mm. Yeah. And is it legal? Will the police come and take you out of it? This house or, th or this tent? I, don't know. I told you there is no specific thing to do with the police. It's not legal, but they can take us out. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's complicated. They call it a jungle. Yes, it's when the an where the animals live. They treat us like animals. Does the UN know that you're here, that, that, that this refugee camp is here? I think we are invisible to the UN here. We didn't see anyone from them, and we didn't have any help and anything from them. Yeah, I saw them in Greece and other countries, but here there is no one. They don't see us, I don't know, they don't care maybe, yes. That was Majid. He didn't want us to use his full name, fearful for the safety of his family back in Damascus, Syria. Majid is 21 years old, one of thousands stranded in the Calais refugee camp, which many there call the jungle. It's about two miles or two hours north of Paris. They're all hoping to make their way to Britain. Special thanks to Laura Gaddesdiener, Nermeen Sheikh, Hani Massoud, and Dennis Moynihan. We'll be back in the refugee camp in a minute. Hi, I'm Amy Goodman. I want to thank you for tuning in to Democracy Now! We are so grateful to our fans and followers for being a part of the daily conversation. By choosing a news source that's committed to the truth, you're carrying the message of independent media, reaching hundreds of thousands of people every day. 
In these times of war and elections, we need a media not sponsored by corporations that profit from war, but a media that's truly independent, funded by you. Democracy Now! is not paid for by the weapons manufacturers, the insurance industry or the oil, gas, coal or nuclear companies. We don't take advertising or corporate underwriting dollars. That means we rely on your donations to make our daily independent news hour possible. We need your support today to keep bringing you the hard-hitting, in-depth reporting you've come to expect five days a week. Visit democracynow.org, or you can call 888-999-3877. That's 888-999-3877 to make your holiday gift to Democracy Now! today. Thanks so much for sharing Democracy Now! stories all year long.